What's up everyone? My name is Lehua and welcome to the Superfina channel. I'm a variety content creator, meaning I like a variety of stuff and I talk about them. Today we are talking about manga. Yes, I like to read manga and I like to watch anime during my free time. It is one of my favorite things to do in my free time. And today we are going to talk about one that I've been reading as much as I can. I read scanlations, meaning they are translations scanlated and uploaded on the internet. This manga is called Kusuriya no Hitorikoto. This is a historical mystery, drama, suspense, and a dash of romance. It's a great story. I like it because it's put into historical time and they really implement the culture. So it's set in an era where the emperor in Japan still has a harem. So that's historical. That's how historical it is. All right. And they still have a hierarchy. We have a caste system. And that's where we are. Our main character, her name is Mao Mao. She was captured, made into a slave, and sold to the imperial palace, turned into a servant. Because they have her slave contract, she's working for them for free until her contract is over. She is at the bottom of the barrel. She's just, you know, basic servant she does the basic stuff she's around people who are illiterate they can't really move up because they don't have the knowledge and um, it can be competitive because you can move up by your achievements behavior etc etc she wants to stay out of drama she wants to stay out of drama so her plan is is just to keep a low profile until her contract is done that doesn't happen of course you know to keep the story going what happens is there's an incident so she works in the harem she's a servant of the concubines the consorts whatever you want to call them she's working there and the head concubines they have children some died and so they think there's a curse they think there's a ghost, they think, you know, superstitious stuff. But Mao Mao, she's like, no, I don't think it's that. But she doesn't want to say anything because she doesn't want any attention on her. So one day, two head concubines, both of their babies are really sick, like really sick. Like one of them is about to die. So Mao Mao has a conscience. She's like, oh, I would not be able to live with myself if these children died and I knew how to save them. So she leaves notes in a very strange way, but she leaves notes for them. And one concubine listened to it, the other one didn't. And the one who didn't listen, her baby died. And so there's this guy named Jinshi. He is sort of like the manager of the harem. We will talk about him later because he becomes a secondary protagonist, secondary lead character. How about that? Secondary lead character. We're going to call him that. So he learns that notes were left to both concubines. And he's like, okay, who did this? Because one, he wants to utilize them. And two, um, he wants to know if they're a threat or not because they had knowledge. And that knowledge can be used against this harem while it still helped him. You know, knowledge is power kind of thing. He looks for her, he finds her. She didn't want to be found. She wants to be left alone, but she got found and um, they promote her. They promote her to be a servant of the concubine that she helped. And what was happening was the babies were getting sick from the face powder, the face powder that everyone was using. And um, the moms, they were using it too to make themselves look beautiful, to make sure they have the emperor's attention, to make sure they live up the, to the expectations that people have of them. You know, they have to be eagle, they have to be beautiful, they have to be top-notch in everything. So they were using this powder that I believe had a harsh chemical in it. 
And this face powder makes your skin lighter, I believe. Kind of like a bleach. And the moms are always holding the babies, right? And so the babies, you're inhaling this harsh chemical. And that's what was causing these deaths and illnesses. So what Mau Mau left as a note was, it's the face powder. Stop using it. Take it away. Do not let it be exposed to the babies. So one concubine listened, the other one didn't. There you go. And that's the first chapter. That's the first chapter. And that's where we start this whole series. Now the question is, how does Mau Mau know this knowledge? How does she know that this face powder had a chemical in it? How does she know that it was deathly? And the reason is her father is a doctor. Her father is a doctor and he helped women in brothels. Yes, he helped prostitutes. And that's where she learned it. Her father helped some prostitutes. They were using the face powders to make themselves beautiful so they can get that customers, get that money. And because of beauty, they started dying and deteriorated. And yeah, Mamo's father was a doctor. And I guess from his influence, she just became very interested in the medical field. Not only in the medicines, the diagnosis, but she also was interested in poison. She was first interested in poison because she wanted to know how it worked. Why did the medicine work? And she would like test herself. And this transitions into when she becomes observant for the concubine. She ends up being the food tester. The food tester to test if there's poison in the food. And this is perfect for her. She's already experimented herself with poison and other things. So this is the best job for her. She is excited. She's like, oh, I can't wait to be poisoned so I know what it feels like and try to cure myself. She's super into that. So just knowing that she's interested in poison and medicine and all of that stuff, we can get an idea how her personality is. She's kind of quirky yet kind of cynical at the same time. She's a realist. The reason this manga has kept my attention is because Mau Mau is put in all kinds of predicaments. And I want to know how she survives. Like I said, she is quirky yet cynical, but she analyzes everything. She's a realist. She knows what's up and she needs to know how to survive. So for example, she started out as a servant in the inner palace because she was abducted by human traffickers. Mamo's plan was to keep a low profile until her contract went up. She knew her status was low. She had no power, no connections. And after analyzing her situation, she concluded all she could do was stay drama free and stay out of trouble. So she is a food tester, right? For some reason, Jinchi, remember I mentioned him earlier? This guy over here. This is Jinchi. He knows that she's smart. He knows that she's analytical. She's observant. For some reason, he keeps giving her cases or assignments to solve. She doesn't want to take these cases because it requires work and will potentially put her in danger, which is what she wanted to stay out of. But then she bribes her and she can't refuse. He, he knows how she works. He knows what she's interested in, you know, poison stuff, you know, weird medical stuff. He knows she's interested in that. So he bribes her with it. And she's like, oh my gosh, safety? Or this thing he's bribing me with? Safety? Or this thing he's bribing me with? She took the bribe. Yeah, she took the bribe. So she was, she's always doing these cases, always solving these things, even though it's out of her jurisdiction. Yeah, you know, cause she's just a servant, just a food tester, but no, she's out there solving cases where political people, police officers are supposed to solve. And I think Jinshi asks her to take these cases because some of these are kind of sensitive and he wants to keep the info 
know, tight-lipped. He doesn't want everyone to know about it. Because if it gets out, it could cause chaos in the palace, in the political world. Hmm. Hmm. My girl, Mau Mau. She is observant, inquisitive, strategic, and logical. She is an intelligent woman, which is rare for a commoner. I like how the author correlated her inquisitiveness to experimenting poison on herself, which then made her the perfect taste tester for the concubine, allowing her to constantly be exposed to Jinshi, revealing her intelligence and usefulness. There are some parts in the manga where it's really funny, not only the dynamic between Mao Mao and Jinshi, but also with Mao Mao and the harem. So remember when I said that her dad was a doctor and most of his patients were prostitutes in the brothel? So because she frequented the brothel with her dad, she got to know these prostitutes and they taught her stuff. You know, she didn't act on the things she was taught, but she knows about them. She's like, I know how it works there. I know why you guys do this. And what you do is fascinating. And she has all these knowledge from high class prostitutes and she's in a hair room. And there were a couple episodes, chapters where she taught some of the concubines some of these techniques and whatnot. And they're like, what? Yeah. And Mama's like, Trust me, the emperor's gonna like it. And later on, it was successful. And there's this one episode where the top concubines, they're gonna take a class, they're gonna learn lessons, and they nominated Mao Mao to teach mm, some of the stuff she knew. And <laughs> Jinchi, Mr. Curiosity and Troublemaker for Mao Mao, he's like, what are you teaching them? She's like, ladies only. Men don't need to know about this. He's like, wait, wait, wait. What What are you teaching? What are you guys talking about? She's like, mm -mm -mm. no, no. This is only between them and the emperor. No, no, no. And after the lesson, the different concubines, some of them were like really excited about the new knowledge. Some of them were like scandalized and some of them were like terrified. They're like, what did I just learn? And it's all from this chick who's, you know, a servant who's super scrawny. This chick over here, this chick. As you can tell, I've been talking about Jinchi a lot. Remember I said he's like a secondary lead character. Now Jinchi is a pretty boy bastard. Not literally bastard, he's just a jerk, okay? At first, he was only interested in Mao Mao because she was an enigma, an intelligent commoner. A woman not attracted to him. Yeah, he's a pretty boy in the harem. A lot of the girls there want him. A lot of the guys there want him. But now Mao Mao, Mao's like, what's with this guy? Why is he smiling at me? And that fascinates him. So she's a woman not attracted to him. A woman who sees him like a bug. There's this one scene where he's like, okay, I'll just give her my best smile and she'll fall for me. She'll be friendly with me. And he does that. She's like, what's your problem? Why are you smiling at me like that? Ugh. And he's like, eh? What? I thought every woman falls for my face. But then he was like, Ooh, I like this reaction. It's like, boy. Mm-hmm. Okay. Jinji finds Mao Mao fascinating. And she makes his life interesting. And he likes that. He wants her to be around him. He wants her to be in his life. Why do I keep reading Kusuria no Hitori Goto? Well, I want to know how Mao Mao solves cases. I'm curious about Mao Mao's biological parents because it seems like it's a mystery. Now, Mao Mao's dad was a doctor at the palace. He did something bad to the point where he got kicked out of the palace and now he's a eunuch. My question is, was he always a eunuch? 
then if he was always eunuch, how was Mao Mao born? Right? Because eunuch, you know, they can't reproduce anymore. Then they introduced this guy, Rakan, who is interested in Mao Mao. At one point in the story, Mao Mao was at the brothel to pay off a debt, something happened, blah, blah, blah. And Rakan was visiting her just to talk, play chess, something. And she despises him for some reason. Not because he creeps her out, just because who he is. It's like daddy issue kind of vibe. So I'm wondering, is that her dad? And we got Jinchi. He manages the harem. But why? Why does he manage the harem? He's a beautiful person. And it seems like he's a high position. So why is he managing the harem? And apparently, he's close to the emperor to the point where they can have private discussions. Why are they close? Is Jinchi royalty? We know he likes Mao Mao. So if he's royalty, how are Jinchi and Mao Mao gonna stay together? Because you know, she's a commoner and he's royalty. You know, during that historical time, they're not meant to be together. No. And Jinchi seems sincere about his feelings. So I have no idea how that's gonna work out. Unless Rakan, who's also a political figure, is really her dad. And somehow she ends up being, you know, a daughter of a political figure. And Jinchi is like, ooh, you're a daughter of a political figure. We can get together. I'm predicting. These are my predictions that Rakan is Mamao's dad. She was born because he did it with one of the ladies at the harem and the doctor, her dad that raised her, the doctor that raised her, helped Mamo's birth, didn't fake the baby's death, and he was punished for failing to keep the baby alive. And that's how Mao Mao and the doctor ended up together taking care of patients at the brothels. Another prediction I have is that Jinchi is the emperor's Brother, I really like Kusuria no Hitori Goto. It stimulates my mind. It's in historical time. They are keeping with the culture and they have these episodes of history where Mama is solving cases. And I love mystery shows. I love mystery stories. I'm always guessing what's going to happen. I'm the type that likes to guess. I like to pre predict things and see if it comes true. See if I'm right. I'm really impressed how the author keeps the culture, the setting, but still lets Mao Mao navigate throughout the story while staying within the culture, the customs, the rules. So, for example, there was a part where Mao Mao had to like get out of the harem, but she's a slave, right? She's a slave. She can't get out. But apparently, there's a rule. There's a rule where it says, well, if you have a token from a higher up, a political figure, then you can use that political figure to get you out. And um, she got one. She got one. And she talked to the person, and they're like, I gave you that. And she's like, yeah, you gave me this. Like, mm, I don't want to put myself in that position that I brought you out. Like, I didn't really mean that. And she uses a bribe. She uses her connection with the brothel. She's like, well, I know these ladies here. I can get you guys together. I can set up an appointment for you. And he's like, what? Like, yeah, I could set up an appointment for you. Like, deal. So it's like, she was able to work with the rules to get out. But she was only out for temporary, just to like, be able to do things. She had to go back in because the slave contract, you know. But yeah, I found that very fascinating that the author was able to work that out. I was like, ooh, work it, author, work it. Now for you guys, do you guys have any mangas that you guys are waiting to be updated, waiting for the new book release, new volume, new chapters, etc, etc? What are they and why do you like them? 
Why should others read them? Leave that in the comments below. Share that. I would love to know what you guys are interested in. Like I said, I like to read manga, watch anime. You know, I can read all kinds. I would love to know more. Thank you guys for watching this manga review of Kusuriya no Hitori Goto. If you guys like this, don't forget to give it a like. And if you haven't subscribed yet and you want to, so you'll be notified on future videos, subscribe. We also have different ways to support the Superfina channel. Links are available in the description below. And we have a Superfina Discord. There's a link in the description. You can reach me there. You can DM me. We also have a thread for manga and anime. If want to share what you like and you want people to know about it or you just want to express yourself go there go to the superfina discord click on that thread and share no shame no shame get me i'm sharing it i'm sharing it to the world once again thank you so much for watching this manga review of usiria no hitori goto my name is lehua this was the superfina channel and hopefully i will see you you later this bump hey you are still watching this video that means you liked it so don't forget to give it a like and while you're at it subscribe ring the bell so you don't miss future content the superfina channel also has a patreon and channel membership my patreons channel members y'all are the bomb thank you for all your support here is a link to the Patreon if you want to support too and a list of social medias. All the links will be available in the description below. Thank you so much for watching this video. I have much love, much aloha for y'all and I will see you later.